All right, all right, Charlie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, welcome to church, guys. Welcome to church. I'm Pastor Stephen. If I haven't met you yet, uh, it's wonderful to see you. Man, I was going to come up here a minute ago, but I just saw the Kleins in the back yeah. seat. Can we just, yeah, let's give a round of applause. Man, it's been a, it's been a minute since we saw the Kleins, and man, we are so glad to see you guys again. Holy moly, we love you guys. Um, but I wanted to say, we have a special thing this morning, and that is we are starting our children's ministries up and running, and we are starting a kids worship uh, set. At the beginning of our services, we're going to have downstairs, we're going to have uh, worship just for the kids. So kids, if you want to, they are ready down there, and you can head downstairs and have some kids worship. You're free to stay up here as well, but I'm inviting you, if you want to have some fun and, and uh, go crazy downstairs, you're free to do that, Okay. All right, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to, I'm going to open up our set. Would you stand up with me? Let's go before the Lord this morning. Lord, we thank you so much, Jesus, for your goodness. And Lord, we thank you so much that you are here with us today. Lord, I ask that this morning, as we worship you, that you would come and inhabit the praises of your people. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's worship the Lord together. All right. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, for oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are Sign my 
Aren't you so glad that he's good? I've heard, I've heard a thousand stories of what 
They think your life. I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you are pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers far and wide. I know we're all searching for answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say you're good you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i you're perfect you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us you're perfect you're perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us love so undeniable i i can hardly speak peace so unexplainable i i can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love 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 you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. And who am I that the highest king would welcome? I was lost, but he brought me in his love. Bye. 
Yes, Lord. Yes. Did you know that you're a child of God? I don't know who you are, but I want you to know you are a child of God. I don't have to tell you who you are. The Word of God says this. I have chosen you since before the beginning of time to be in me, to be an heir and a co-heir with God himself. You are a child of God. What a wonderful thing. Would you turn to somebody around you and greet them in the name of the Lord and say, you are a child of God. Greet one another. Brother, you are a child of God. You are too. All right. Holy moly. Praise God. 
Well, at this time, we should ask the kids to come down. We pray for them and sit downstairs, but they downstairs. They're having some fun down there. We, uh, we are really blessed, really privileged to have Marty Smith heading up our children's department. And uh, when, she, when she said, hey, we want to start doing children's worship with the kids, they said, all right, go for it. And I did not realize she was going to roll it out so quickly. So I am, I'm just so happy and blessed uh, that we have Marty in charge down there. So if you see her at church, if you see her at the potluck, would you just give her a high five and a hug and just tell her she's doing a good job? Um, because that's just awesome. So, but... I do want to pray for those kids because you know what? Just because they're downstairs, that doesn't mean they're not a part of our body, right? And it's our responsibility. It's the responsibility of those who are up here. It's the responsibility of parents and grandparents to raise children, right? Kids don't raise themselves, right? So we are, we are pleased and happy that they're here with us. So I'm going to just pray for them right now. Lord, we pray for our kids. We thank you so much, Lord, for all of them. We pray that you'd be with them today, be with the teachers Teach them, Lord, and, and Lord, that your love and joy would be on their heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, we haven't done this in a while, but I hear that somebody had a birthday in this place. Is that right? Mike, you got a birthday? Oh, boy. Is it anybody else's birthday? Yeah. Is it anybody else's birthday this, or is there a birthday this week? Raise your hand, you got a birthday this week. Nope. Okay, it's just Mike then. Mike? We're going to sing to you. Would you sing with me to Mike? Oh, Jay. Hey, when's your birthday, Jay? Oh, boy. All right. So we got to sing for Mike and Jay this morning. So we're going to do uh, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Mike and Jay. Right? Just get all on the same page here. We're not confusing. Okay, ready? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mike and Jay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, guys. Hey, um, not coincidental at all, entirely for your birthdays, we have a potluck after church today. Uh, we <laughs> uh, if you want to stick around after church, head downstairs. We're going to have food. If you didn't bring food, don't worry. Okay, you can come and eat with us anyways. If you want to run to the store and grab something after church, that's fine. But, but if you just want to hang around, we're going to have food downstairs. So come downstairs, hang out with us, get to know each other a little bit better. It's just a time for us to just spend time together uh, as a family. We have foosball and stuff like that. Um, and we break bread together. That's a good thing. So after church today is a potluck downstairs. Also, next week, a week from today after church... Um, if you are involved in children's ministry, we've already talked about, there's a meeting after church. And if you want to be involved in children's ministry, if you say, you know what, I want to hang out with kids and be a blessing, and it's not a huge uh, time commitment, we, you know, if you can help once a month, that's fine. Uh, but after church this next Sunday, uh, they're going to have a meeting downstairs with all the leaders, okay? So come out for that if you would like to, uh, and, and support, support our kids' ministry. It's one of our most important things that we do, honestly. Um, I really, really believe that. And then the last thing that I got to say that I was instructed to say was that um, women's retreat, if you sign up for women's retreat, we need your money today. We will take your money. So you need to see my wife after service. Uh, right now, I think she might be downstairs, but you need to see her after service and either talk to her or hand her a check. And if you are not able to pay, but you also want to go, you still have to talk to her because you have to say, hey, I need some help paying for that. And that's fine. We don't want money to be a hindrance, okay? We don't want, we don't want you to say, oh, I would go, but. So, but we need to know today, right? So you got to go talk. You can either talk to Miss Kim right there, Miss Kim Davis, or you can talk to my wife after service. It needs to be done today. When does it need to be done? Today. today. That's right, ladies. Okay. Today is the day the Lord has made. Go tell my wife you have money for her. Okay. Are we... I think that's it. Is that it, Dylan? Are we, are we doing a building announcement today, Dylan? Is that today? Are we doing a building fund announcement? No, next month. Next building fund. Yeah, let's do it right now, buddy. Hey, let's welcome Dylan Smith up here. Hey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, folks, I just want to talk about our building fund of the church. One of the things, as all of you know, living in Lincoln County is the cost.
cost is prohibitive at times. Um, you know, f new families moving in the town. You know, I run a grocery store, and I can't tell you how many times I've had young families trying to move in the town and say, hey, I want to come work for you. I do an interview, and I got them set up to come work for me, and suddenly they can't find housing. They can't find a place to live because it's so expensive here. Um, and being a smaller church um, with a younger pastor and family, I mean, can't even imagine, you know, the rent and the cost prohibition for this. And one of the things uh, churches used to do for years is have, you know, a house for the pastor and the staff. That would be cost effective because we all know that, you know, inflation's going up, interest rates are going up. It's a crazy economy. So one of the things we've done as a church council um, is put together a building fund. And when we have $60,000, we're going to go put a down payment on a house and buy a house. And that will be part of his salary. But it'll also be a way for us to have a pastor here at our church that won't totally stretch them financially and have a home for them to live in. So right now we're over halfway to our goal, which is awesome. Yeah. So that's... That's awesome. I mean, a few months ago, we were like five or $6,000, yeah. and suddenly, Lord just keeps blessing it. So if for some reason you have beyond your tithe or feel like you have a gift you want to give, you just write building fund on your check or your envelope for cash or however you want to do it, or online at our website, and mm -hmm. you can put the checks and cash in that box back there or hand it to the pastor or one of the leaders. Don't hand church. it to me. <laughs> okay, don't hand the pastor. <laughs> but you know, you could. You could I don't touch the money. <laughs> find one of the other leaders in the church. We'll make yeah, sure it gets yeah. to the right place. Yeah. But we, what we want to do is make it so we can always have a place. So, I mean, we're not going to let Stephen go and his wife Amy. We'll make sure <laughs> they never leave. However, you know, if that transition does happen down the road, we want to be able to have a place where we can have a pastor come and not feel like I have to pay $2,500 in rent for a three or four bedroom, especially if they have a young family. It's hard. And uh, so any way you can give or help out with that or just pray for this building fund because it's been an amazing blessing to see how far it's gone and where, where it's going. So I just thank the church for your support in this. And uh, anything else we need to say? No, that's good. All right. Can we pray about this, folks? Father God, I just ask your blessing upon our pastor and his family, Lord. We all know how hard it is to live in this community, but we are blessed to live on the beach, Lord. Mm -hmm. We are blessed to live in a community that uh, loves, loves the Lord, Lord Jesus. And we just need help to uh, find a home and get the funds to make a place that can make it realistic to have a pastor here that can afford to live and to shepherd and guide us and minister to us and raise us up to be ministers in our community, Lord Jesus. And mm -hmm. I thank you right now for all that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan serves on our church council. So if you uh, need more information about that or any other business information, you can talk to him. You can talk to our other council members, our Jill Paola, who's over there. Uh, Donna Cito, who I think she's not here today. Uh, oh, wait, no, she's over, she's over there. Oh, and Adrian, yeah, Adrian as well, who's right there. There you go. Yeah, I was like, oh, Donna, did I miss her? No, no. No, Adrian, she's transformed. Um, so, so talk to them, uh, and they're good people. And you elected them, so they got to be good people, right? So <laughs> that was it. That was an election joke. Don't worry about that. Um, I want to preach today. I want to get into the Word of God. Are you ready? Let's get into this thing, huh? Would you open your Bibles up to John 21? I'm excited about this, man. I, I love all this stuff, but I tell you what, I love preaching, man. I love sharing the Word of God. Maybe it's just because I like the sound of my own voice. Maybe it's just because I like the Bible. I like talking about the Bible. I don't know what it is, but I just, I like this, all right? So let's go to John 21. I hope you like it, too. I hope you get something out of it, too. Let's pray. Lord, we just pray that your words would be anointed this morning. God, that they would penetrate our hearts, that we, they would go inside of us and do something in us, Jesus. They wouldn't just be things we hear, they'd be things that we do. Lord, I pray that you would come and be here with your people, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, 
Uh, I'm going to read John 21. I'm going to read verses 1 through 6, and then we're going to kind of walk through it with the slides and everything like that. But I'll tell you, how about this? Is there somebody who would be interested in reading verses 1 through 6 out loud up here with a microphone, huh? Who wants to stand up and say, I will project and I will read the word of the Lord this morning? Who wants to do it? Sylvia, you want to do it? You want to do it? Come on up, girl. Come on down, Sylvia. Now, I, you, I got to use a microphone. You want me to hold it? I can hold it for you, okay? Okay, so this is John 21. Ready? Not yet. Okay, not yet. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm on your schedule here, lady. Verses 1, 1 through 6. So it's okay. right there until the, right there. Okay. Jesus appears to seven disciples. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of his, the disciples were there. Simon, Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana mm -hmm. in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. To, they went out to the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. They called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you'll get some. So they did, and they could, couldn't haul in all, they couldn't haul in the neck because there was so many fish in it. Hey, yeah, good job, <laughs> Sylvia. Good job, Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you, hon. Good job, Sylvia. What does it mean to live in the shadow of the resurrection? Last week was really cool. It was really, really great. I hope you were here for, for at least some of it. We were reminded Good Friday about how God is within our places of suffering. He doesn't avoid those things. He's there with us in the midst of our suffering. Uh, the prophet Isaiah says this about Jesus. He was a man well acquainted with grief and sorrow. And then on Easter, we get to have this wonderful, joyous celebration where we remembered that death couldn't hold Jesus down, right? But that something stronger pulled him up out of death and that he can pull us out of death as well. That's so cool. Now, this is the week after Easter, right? The week after it happened. What happens next? What happens next? I want you to put yourself in the position of the disciples, okay? They've just had this incredible experience, right? Jesus has died and now he's been raised to life again. What does that mean? What is that? What happens next? I, I don't know. I mean, I can just imagine them sitting around, you know, in a, in a room together. It says there's seven of them just hanging around in a room together, just kind of like, wow. I don't know what to do, you know? Thomas is like, dude, I, I didn't even think he was dead and resurrected. And then I, he was there and I was sticking my hand in his side. It was crazy. And Nathaniel's like, man, this is nuts. I don't know, I don't know what to do, right? And Peter's like, dad, it's crazy. How are you guys going to go fishing? You know? <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm going to go fishing. Leave it to a bunch of guys to find like the most inopportune time, right, to go fishing. And everybody's like, yeah, all right, all right, let's go fishing, you know. Um, I like fishing. I enjoy fishing, but I, I wouldn't call myself a fisherman. Okay, David Ramirez is a fisherman. All right. <laughs> Whenever we have a fishing trip, basically the fish just jump out of the water into David's bucket. They're like, all right, all right. Let's, just, let's save everybody some time and emotional energy and just get this thing over with. We went fishing this last, every, every year the men go on a fishing trip together, all the guys in the church. And so we went this last, this last I, I caught nothing. It was depressing. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, 
David's got the EPA calling him up on the phone, you know, like, could you leave some fish in the ocean, please? Like, <laughs> we're trying to replenish stocks. Something around two trillion fish are caught every year. Isn't that incredible? Two trillion. I mean, the, more, the most incredible thing is that one trillion of those fish are caught by David Ramirez. <laughs> <laughs> my grandpa, now my grandpa, he was a great fisherman. He was, man, he was a fisherman. He would get out there. He would, we have this picture of my grandpa, um, and he's all decked up in his fishing gear, and he's got his fishing pole, and he's got this smile on his face, the biggest smile I've ever seen. I mean, he smiled at us as grandkids, but it was, you know, you could tell this is a happy man, you know. He's right where he wants to be, fishing. And when I was uh, researching this passage and, and preparing this week, um, I'm, I'm blessed, I'm privileged to have, actually, my, my grandpa, uh, he was a preacher, and I have all of his sermon notes on the book of John. Um, so sermons that he had preached over the years uh, on the book of John. And so I looked up a sermon that he preached on this particular passage, um, and it just so happened he preached on this exact passage on April 28th, 1963. So that's almost exactly 59 years. It'll be 59 years to the day on Thursday. Uh, isn't that incredible? And he preached on the same passage. Um, and so then I was like, well, maybe I could just read his sermon. But I didn't. <laughs> and I didn't. But I, I do want to just select a piece because he's a fisherman. He understands fishermen a little bit better than I do. And so I want to just pull just a, a piece of his sermon. I want to share it with you. This is what he said. He said, Jesus selected fishermen for disciples because they had a quality of character upon which he could depend once that quality was dedicated to his cause. They had a sincere and happy devotion to their occupation. See, a good fisherman, and this is why I cannot say I'm a good fisherman, a good fisherman will go out and fish in whatever weather it is, right? It can be rainy, it can be stormy, you could have lightning coming down and the fisherman is going to be out there fishing, right? A fisherman will fight through the weeds to get to just the right spot where the fish are definitely going to be biting, right? Even maybe risking drowning to battle down a fish of an incredible size, right? They know exactly what kind of lure to use. I mean, when we're out there on the boat, David's, you know, he's got basically this, this you know, cornucopia. He's got one of those things, one of those boxes, you know, those like Mary Poppins had. <laughs> you open it up, and then you reach down in there and pull out a lamp, you know, and then you pull out like seven or eight full fish, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of us are just like, oh, I don't know, we're just going to bob it up and down, I guess. <laughs> to the fishermen here, to the fishermen in this story, Peter's suggestion, let's go fishing, it makes total sense to them, right? They're dedicated to their craft. Let's go fishing. Happy and successful people in any occupation that you pick, whether it's fishing or whether it's uh, working at a computer or whether it's uh, raising kids or teaching or anything. Successful and happy people are those who can wholeheartedly devote themselves to their task. Do we approach our lives with the sense of determination and purpose that we see here in these fishermen. Did you know that the joys in your life, the places in your life that bring you joy and happiness, did you know that God put those there? God wants to use your passion. He wants to use your dedication. Did you know that God plays you in whatever job you're in right now? Did you know that? Some of you might say, well, I'd like to know why. But... <laughs> God has a purpose for you in the situation that you find yourself in. And the question now is, will you devote yourself wholeheartedly to that thing? 
Scripture says whatever you do, whether you're working, whether you're playing, whether you're building or whatever, whatever it is that you do, do it unto the Lord. Devote yourself to it. Happy and successful people devote themselves to the task at hand. Unhappy people are constantly questioning themselves. Why am I doing this? And why do I have to do this? And discouragement sets in. And then bitterness. Right? And then a sense of self-loathing. I wish I didn't, wasn't this person. And I'm not saying, okay, you know, quit your job and go be a fisherman. Okay? Because that's what your passion is. But what I'm saying is wherever place you find yourself right now, whether you're a student, whether you're a, a, an educator, whether you're a, a, somebody who works a nine to five or somebody in retail or coming up to tourist season, you know, wherever you are right now, devote yourself to that task. Purpose yourself with determination. God has a reason, a purpose for your passion. So, in your life, In the shadow of the resurrection, what happens next? When you work, do it with a sense of dedication. Play with a sense of passion. Whatever that is. Don't hold back on life. Live it out to the fullest extent. Peter and the boys, they go out night fishing. They are dedicated to their craft. That's a good thing. That's a wonderful thing. But... And here comes the rub, right? So let's go into the scriptures here. Let's go to verse, let's go to verse 3. And it says that they, Peter says, I'm going to go out fishing, right? And they say, all right, we're going to go with you. And they all pile in their boat. And they go out there. And they go out night fishing. Night fishing is uh, generally or early morning. We're talking like 2 to 5 a.m., is the prime time on the Lake of Galilee, on the Sea of Galilee. That's, that's when you want to get out there and do your fishing. So that's when they're out there. They're out there early, early, early in the morning. They went out, got in the boat, and that night they caught nothing. These experienced fishermen, dedicated to their task, this has never happened to David, right? They get out there, they spend all night fishing, and they come up with, as we in the scientific community call, bupkis. Bupkis, zilch, nada, not a fish to show from it. Seven guys in a boat all night, looking around, wondering where the fish are. And then, next verse, in the early morning there, just as the sun is maybe starting to come out, it's bright enough that you can see shapes, not quite enough that you can recognize those shapes. Early, early in the morning, Jesus is on the shore. But the disciples, they can't quite see. There's a form there. They're probably 100 yards away from the shore. You've got to be close to the shore when you do night fishing in Galilee. So they're close. They can see somebody there, but they don't quite know who it is. Verse 5. Jesus says to them, and actually I, I want to uh, change this translation because I don't know who did this, but they did it wrong. He calls out to them, and he says, friends, that's not the word he used. That's not the word he used. He didn't say friends. The word he used literally means children. Or it could be, hey, boys, right? Kids. Boys! And he doesn't say, have you have any fish either. He says, have you got anything to eat? Okay. Literally, he says, have you got anything to eat? Now, in translation, we say, well, it's probably he's talking about fish, right? Talking about getting fish to eat. But that's literally what he says. He says, hey, boys, you got anything to eat? Right? They just been up all night long. Plunging into the depths, trying to get some fish. No, the answer. All right, verse 6, shoot your net over on the other side. Throw that net over the other side. Now, when you're fishing like they were fishing, what you want to do is you want to create, uh, basically, you're, you're trying to surround a shoal of fish. Okay, so, so you're doing things like you're using, you usually use multiple boats to kind of corral fish into And then you have a net, and the net is basically a, a net, like basic fiber net, and it's got weights on the end of it, and you just shaboom and throw it over there, and then hopefully the fish, bam, they get caught. And then you got to swim down there, dive down, gather the net up, and haul it into the boat. Okay, so that's how we're talking about first century fishing on the Sea of Galilee. That's how it's done. So to just toss your net over the edge of the boat is not a very good strategy. 
okay? That would not be what an experienced fisherman would do. But Jesus says to them, hey, shoot your net on the other side of that boat there. You're going to catch some fish. And then they do it. They immediately do it. And I want to just point something out here. The disciples, even before they recognized the form of Jesus, they were so used to listening and obeying what Jesus said that when that command came, there was no hesitation for them. Something inside of them responded to the voice of the master. Something inside of them said, I'm going to do this crazy thing that this guy's asked me. I'm not sure exactly who that is, but the voice sounds familiar enough that I'm going to do it. Jesus says this. He says, my sheep will recognize my voice. In the shadow of the resurrection, right, the week after Easter, those who are Jesus' followers are led by his voice. Would you like to be a disciple of Jesus? Learn to hear his voice. Learn to hear his voice. Read your scriptures. Yes, worship. Converse with God. Talk to him and then let him talk back to you, right? When I do prayer with James now and I'm teaching him is we pray and then we wait. We stop. We listen. Because conversations are two ways, right? So listen to the Lord. Learn his voice. Hear what he says. Spend some time just in silence, just waiting. Learn his voice. Because the dedication and the purpose of our lives are good. But when we operate out of our greatest effort, what we come up with is a kiss. But when we can learn to respond to the voice of our master, then all of our passions and all of our wonderful dedication and all of our good effort gets applied in the right direction. And that's where we catch something. That's where we find success. Right? Throw your net on the other side so he tosses it over on the other side of the boat. And they begin to try and gather it up. But the problem is there are so many fish. The boat becomes in danger of sinking because of the amount of fish that they're pulling in. Here's a new way of living. A new way of living. After the resurrection, the week after Easter, live a purposeful life. I can't tell you what that is. What's your passion? What are you excited about? Where has God placed you? Are you a parent? Then parent with dedication and devotion. Are you you working on a computer? Well, then you work that, baby. You work that computer. (laughs) You apply yourself to that thing, man. That computer is not going to know what hit it. Are you teaching? God bless you. Are you in retail? Man, I just say, in this, in this area, this is our industry. This is our, our fishing season, is our tourist season. If you work in retail or somewhere in the tourist industry, man, I want to just, you are an incredible person. And I know, man, these, these Portlanders, if you're visiting from Portland, by the way, I love you so much. <laughs> but I tell you what, at the end of tourist season, when I talk to the retail workers that I know, they need like a three-week vacation and a... A detox, you know what I mean? (laughs) So if you work in retail, if you're in the tourist industry, let me tell you something. This season, apply yourself, man. Apply yourself, right? When you wake up in the morning, don't think to yourself, man, I can't believe i got to talk to one more big city person. When you wake up in the morning, you say to yourself, I have a purpose here. I have a reason for being here. I have things I'm going to do today that nobody else can do. And if I do it by listening to the master's voice, I know my impact can be so much greater. Not just my impact at my work, but my impact for the good things of life. The kingdom of God, which is peace and love and joy and goodness. There's a lot of bad things in this world, friends. But when we apply ourselves to the things that God has for us, By listening to his voice, we begin to push back against those bad things. Begin to turn them around. Right? That's what you get to do. That's the new way of living. 
You dedicate yourself to what God has given you and you listen to the master's voice. Now the disciples, they had so much fish, they couldn't, they couldn't haul it in. This abundant, overwhelming life, that kind of life accomplishes much more than we could ever imagine it could. Jesus died so that we could have peace with God. So what's next? Live out your life with passion, honesty, purpose. God has a reason for you and your job in this church, in your family. He has a purpose. Approach all these things with that sense of dedication. Be aware of the master's voice. Recognize that the good things in this life do not come to the most powerful people or the richest people or those who are most well established. The good things, the truly good things in this life come to those who are obedient to the Lord's voice. Come to those who dedicate themselves to his work I want to encourage you today, live your life like a fisherman. Be devoted. Live it out with determination. But above all these things, above everything else, hear the voice of the Lord. Hear what God has for you. And so I want to pray for you. Can I just pray for you this morning? And I, I know there might even be somebody here who says, you know what, I, I'm on board, but I don't know what God has called me to. I'm not sure I'll say, number one, first of all, you have things in your life to which you are called right now, right? Every single one of us is a son or daughter or mother or father or auntie or uncle or cousin, right? Or grandma, grandparents, grandma, grandpa. And all of us have a, have a calling to our family. So right away, you have one thing. Now, as to the other things, as to your passions, as to your job and all those things, I want to pray for you. And I want you, if you feel like that's, I'm not sure where God exactly is calling me right now. I want you to just take a moment this morning. I'm just going to give you a few minutes because I, there are other people around you. They know what they're doing. They've got to get to work. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to give you a few moments this morning. But I want to encourage you this week, take some time, some silent, quiet time to be with God and say, Lord, what it is? What is it? What is it that you're calling me to? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it for you this morning so you know how to do it. And then later this week, you can do it yourself. Okay? So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come before you today as children of God. What a wonderful reminder that we can come before you not as uh, slaves or as uh, groveling. You know, we come before you as children and we say, hey, hey, Papa, hey, Dad, hey, Lord, we're, we're here. And we come before you this morning. I bring these people before you. I thank you for every single one of them. Every one of them has a purpose. Every one of them has a, a reason for the things that they do. And you have put deposits of yourself in each one of these people, passion and occupation and calling. And Lord, I pray right now, especially for those who are trying to discover what that is. And if that's you, I just want to encourage you to just, I'm going to, I'm going to say a prayer, you repeat after me, and then we're going to wait for just a period of time for God to speak to us. So you can just speak silently to yourself. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, I want to know why you made me. Would you please speak to me? And I'll listen to you. And now we're just going to take a minute, just, just a brief minute to just sit in silence before our Lord and listen to what he has to say. See if you can hear his voice. Let's just take a minute to just listen. Lord, I thank you for your purposes. I thank you for your plans, God. And when you look at us, when you look at your children, you don't say, hey, you better watch out because I'm coming after you. No, when you look at your children, you say things like, behold, I have plans for you, plans to prosper you, plans to build you up. Man, it's going to be wonderful. 
Lord, I pray that today we would approach our lives with a sense of purpose. I pray that your Holy Spirit would come upon us. Lord, that you would give us a full measure of your goodness so that we can go and approach the things in our lives with the dedication and determination just like your disciples did. But I pray also that you would open up our ears to hear your voice. God, clear those ears out so that we can hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Now, we do have a potluck right downstairs. So head downstairs if you'd like. Sprawl around. Take some time. And I really hope that you get a chance to meet and greet some people around you. God bless you. God go with you. We'll see you again next week. Bless you guys.